Liz, is this all about stimulus or are we genu genuinely concerned about these cases we're seeing in Europe? And oh, by the way, we're doing a lot of cases here every day, too. I don't think it's all about stimulus, but we're in the middle of a really heavyweight news cycle, and it's not allowing us to look out really any further than about 30 days at a time. And I think ultimately, in 30 days' time, the market is lower than it is today. And here's why. If you look at just on Monday, the S&P was up 5% month to date. That didn't make common sense. We're in the middle of a highly contentious election season. The market does not typically rally through a new White House, and the pandemic isn't over. And we're still waiting for stimulus. So in the short term, I think we should see a pullback here. But in the longer term, and even in the next three to four months, I think some of the fear around a blue wave has been a little overblown. And the market has to weigh the two sides of that. On one side, we might see higher taxes and stronger regulations. On the other side, we're going to see probably a huge fiscal package and some of the tariffs maybe be rolled back. And at the end of the day, I think that second side wins. So the answer is, as an investor, even if we have a pullback in the short term, you don't do anything about it because you're not going to put money back on the table soon enough to catch a rally on the other side. Josh, is that what we're, we're looking at, a market pulling back over the next 30 days or so? And then if that happens, what should the investor do? I'm not sure because invest, I'm not sure that that's what we're looking at per se because investors are very good at uh, processing information and then moving on with their lives. We have seen uh, the resilience of of the investor desire to get to the next news cycle rather than dwelling on the current one time after time after time. And this year is a great example of that. I think there's a bigger story playing out, though, right now, uh, which is in shares of Fastly. Mm. And this is not an important company, but what's happening to its share price is very important. And I'll explain why as, as concisely as I can. Um, Fastly is not even in the S&P 500. Why? They don't earn any money, can't be in. But it's an important stock because it's part of a group of stocks that have captured the imagination of investors, especially this new class of investors that have come to dominate the daily trading uh, in the market this year. And what's happening with Fastly, I think, is serving as both cautionary tale and, and possibly canary in the coal mine uh, for a lot of the type of speculative activity we've seen in NASDAQ names. So this is a company that basically said, Instead of coming in with $73 million in revenue for one quarter, they're going to come in with $71 million. And Wall Street took 30% of, off its market cap after that. Mm -hmm. Now, anyone that runs a business knows that if you do $71 million and not $73 million, it's really not that big of a deal. But that is a sign of how much investors had been bidding these stocks up and how unrealistic the expectations of perfection have been. And I think you're seeing a lot of names that are similar uh, in terms of who owns them mm -hmm. selling off in sympathy. And this is the type of thing that could really snowball. So that's on my radar today, okay. more so than the back and forth over stimulus.